there's not really a straight answer for that. There are good people on there you can source from and scammers, but you can just get away from, you get away with just doing uh, Alibaba. So you go there, you type in the keyword, understand that some keywords, some products might be called different things in different countries. So for example, if I look at the product, the, the most money I ever made of any product was when I was 21, right? Um, and I was importing motorcycles out of China. They were pocket bikes. They were 49cc engines. They were like this big or this big. An adult would ride on them. They would go at, um, you know, 20, 30 kilometers an hour, whatever, that to be dangerous. I used to sell them for 400 and buy them for 80 from motorcycles. We used to do a container with 330 in them. And that was very, very, very profitable, right? So that was a really cool product. But I couldn't find them initially until I looked at the other names. It was called a monkey bike. So when I looked at monkey bikes instead of pocket bikes, then I found like way more people offering it. So just be aware that it might have another word. Like just a funny example I talk about is that, you know, when, you know, one of my suppliers came to Australia from America, because I sell something from America, I said, um, uh, let's go to the beach. And he's like, cool. I said, hey, I've got a collection of uh, thongs in my, in my place. You could pick whichever uh, of, your, of my thongs you like, and we can wear them to the beach. Uh, and he looked at me like I had two heads. Of course, in America, um, they wear flip-flops to the beach, and a thong is a G-string, whereas in Australia, they're called thongs. In uh, uh, New Zealand, they're called jandal. Don't ask me why. So they're important to know those cultural differences, especially around words. Um, I don't know what you call them in, you know, in Germany, what, what the words are. Maybe it's just sandals. Uh, it's sandals, flip-flops, yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> okay. So then we type it in, and then um, we have um, a, a template, which is how to actually uh, approach the factory, where we ask about 20 questions, which are designed to make sure that you weed out the scammers. Because I understand that there are a lot of people, especially sitting in Nigeria and Lagos, who are pretending to be factories. So we send those out. They're designed to make sure that um, no one uh, is cheating you, but also to make it position you as an expert. And what that does, it helps the factory to give you a good quality price. So a good quality product and a good price. So we'll send that out to 20 factories 